Our Jax Classic Superstars Deep Dive continues today on the channel, Jax Classic Superstars Series 20. Welcome everyone, Kyle here back again on the channel and today we're talking Jax Class Superstars Series 20. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe like everybody else says. But uh, we're walking our way through every Jax Class Superstars release known to man. Today, Series 20. That means there's 19 videos to go back in the archives and check out and uh, catch up to speed with this video as we're into Series 20 as I said. Uh, it's still to come. We got Series 20 through 28 of the single card releases. Still got the tag teams, the three packs. We got the ring giants. We got the belts. We got uh, the one of 100s. We got the limited editions. Go on and on. We got a lot of videos to do. Still early in the deep dive, I guess you would say. So there's still time to catch up. So if you've missed any of the other videos, please go back and watch those. But today, classic Series 20. Very interesting set. Obviously, 20th set is a big number for a lot of uh, lines. Not a lot of toy lines. I think we're a little spoiled with the Mattel Elites of the day, uh, even the Basic Series. But there is not a lot of toy lines that last 20 sets. If you take a step back and think about it, very few ever last that long. So uh, a real milestone number of 20. However, in my opinion, this was the start of the decline of the Jax Classic Superstars. We'll get into that with this rock figure big time. But uh, the wheels started to fall off the bus a little bit, I think, with Series 20. I do remember seeing this set at my local Toys R Us. I do not remember seeing this at Target or Walmart. Always interested to hear your guys' comments. Did you see these at Target, Walmart, Toys R Us? I know I bought the whole set from Ringside Collectibles, but I did see a few of the other ones at uh, my local Toys R Us back in the day. But uh, I always felt, you know, I don't know how many sets back it was, maybe four or five. It got a lot tougher to find all these. Um, it's just the way it went. I don't know. But let's start Series 20 off with a little cliffhanger from Series 19, uh, The Rock. You guys all know we had Series 19 Rock. Well, he's back again in Series 20. And this was one of the biggest miscarriages of justice, one of their biggest blunders in the Jax Class Superstar Series, in my opinion, that they released this Rock again. It's the exact same Rock we had Series 19. The only difference is this one comes with the World Title Belt instead of the Intercontinental Championship. So let's take a look there. There you go. You can see it. Pretty familiar looking rock, I would say, huh? A little deja vu to Series 19. You got the rock on the side. There's a little glamour shot. And you got the back of the package. You got the whole lineup of Series 20 down there. Seven people in this series. You know, a far cry from the 10 or 11 we've been accustomed to in a lot of these sets. So this is a smaller set. Uh, I'll read the back of the rock here. Uh, the Rock, weight 260 pounds, height 6 foot 5, finishing move, The Rock Bottom and The People's Elbow, titles, WWE Champion, WCW Champion, Intercontinental Champion, and World Tag Team Champion. Uh, not much different than the Proto, pretty much the exact same uh, look by the looks of things. I did bring uh, Classic Superstar Series 19 for a little refresher. You can see kind of the comparison here. Very, very disappointing. If I wasn't a completist, I wouldn't buy all these. This is an easy pass if you're not, because it's the same figure. Especially if you're a loose collector, uh, you don't need both of these. Uh, they did use a different glamour shot on the back, I believe. Let me get this flipped around. You can see the back there. And maybe it is about the same, maybe just a little bit of a different angle. But uh, a very, very interesting decision. I don't think we ever got the answer as to why. They released this one. Uh, my memory would say that, hey, maybe they had another uh, person in the lineup all ready to go. At the last second, they had a problem with the rights, problem with the likeness or something, and they had to bump it. Let's just say it was Dory Funk Jr. I think he got bumped later on, but let's pretend Dory Funk Jr. got bumped, so they threw the rock in. It was easy. They had the mold. They had the set uh, ready to go. They just said, hey, we'll give him a different title belt. Nobody will notice. And like I said, this was kind of where it felt like it was going off the rails a little bit. We had a f quite a few mess missteps in the Jax Class Superstars line. Not as many as the uh, Ruthless Aggression Adrenaline type figures, but there was some issues out there. And uh, pro I'll probably do a, a top 10 biggest blunders video or maybe a top 10 favorite Jax Class Superstars video, uh, maybe towards the end or something like that. I think that would be an interesting look back after we've watched all these to see who my personal favorites are. And then you guys can get your own top 10 list too, but... 
I'll definitely do a top 10 blunders. This one will definitely make the top 10 and very disappointed on this one. So there you have it. Jack's Class Superstar Series 20, The Rock, and Series 19, same figure. Uh, go figure. Let's see who's next. All right, next up in Class Superstar Series 20, we have the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. We go from one of the all-time worst in the line, that rock uh, snafu of the same figure in two sets, to the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Probably my favorite Ric Flair in the traditional Jack's Classic Superstars line. You guys know we've got a lot of different uh, Ric Flairs with a lot of great robes. But this green robe is just eye-catching, something different. Uh, it just seems different than the normal reds and blues we seem to see with robes for Ric Flair. This green really pops. Love the big gold belt that came along with it. Check that out right there. Very awesome. Uh, this is the same exact Ric Flair as I believe it was Classic Superstar Series 2 that had Ric Flair in the red robe. Uh, this is just green with uh, green tights as well. There you got Ric Flair on the side there. Look at all that writing. And you got the Glamour Shot picture. Like I said, the same as the uh, Ric Flair we'd had previously. And then you got the back of the package with the lineup and the Ric Flair Glamour Shot. So let's read the back. Weight 243 pounds, 6 foot 1. Finishing move, the figure 4 leg lock. Titles, WWE Champion, WCW Champion, Intercontinental Champion, United States Champion, and World Tag Team Champion. Uh, pretty much straight on from what uh, the pro prototype shows. But I love this flare head scan like he's in mid-woo. I uh, love the belt that's added here. And I, like I said, I love the green robe. So this is a fabulous figure. My favorite of Classic Superstars Series 20. And like I said, I think this is my favorite Ric Flair from the single Classic Superstars run. Of the traditional ones, at least. Uh, a very solid figure and a little underrated. You know, that red one. I think when most people think Ric Flair Jack's Class Superstars, they think of that early red robed one. I like to think of this one. Uh, we also have that nice blue one from his NWA first NWA title win. Uh, a lot of good Ric Flairs to choose from, but this is my favorite. So there you go. There's Ric Flair. Let's see who we got next. All right, next up in Class Superstars Series 20, we have Tony Atlas. You know, we talked about Rocky Johnson, and now you got the yin to the yang. You got his tag team partner, uh, Tony Atlas. And we also got a Tony Atlas with Rocky Johnson in the two packs, which we'll get to. Uh, when we start going through the two packs of the Jax Class Superstars line. A bit of a plain Jane figure. Probably my least favorite in the set outside of maybe the LJN. We'll get to that one soon. Uh, but just a plain figure. Not a lot of bells and whistles with this one. Uh, as you can see right there. Um, I would like to say, hey, this was probably the peg warmer. But nothing really peg warmed at this point. Uh, like I said, I didn't see a lot of these figures out in the stores. Uh, at my local Toys R Us, and like I said, I didn't see this set at Walmart Target. So it didn't have time, or there wasn't enough distribution to make this a peg warmer, but I have to believe it would have been if uh, you know more traditional cases were out there. Uh, Tony Atlas, uh, another famed wrestler, uh, would love to see a Mattel one day. We just recently got the Rocky Johnson Mattel, so it's not out of the possibilities of getting a Tony Atlas, I would say, so I would be all for that. I would like to see that Mr. USA uh, Tony Atlas, kind of the USA gear, and maybe the... Uh, Singlet, uh, also Saba Simba. I'm sure some people wouldn't mind a Saba Simba out there, uh, a niche character that Tony Atlas had for a time. Um, but we'll see where that all goes with that. Uh, speaking of Tony Atlas, uh, Adrenaline, one of the later Adrenaline Jack series, there was a Mark Henry Tony Atlas 2 pack. I am in search of that Tony Atlas. I think there's one on eBay for like 45 bucks. I just don't want to pay that much, but I just need that Tony Atlas. I already have the Mark Henry. Uh, so that's all my list of, of you guys following along on my Jax Class, not Jax Class Superstars, but Jax Ruthless Aggression Style Figures Completion uh, quest I'm on. So I'm looking for that Tony Atlas. But not a lot to say about this one. Like I said, plain Jane, just tights, no robe, no nothing, no interesting accessories. We love talking our accessories, and this set is very void of accessories. The only accessory we really got for the most part, besides one chair, is uh, title belts. Not a lot of fun uh, history of those title belts to talk about, so... There you have it, Tony Atlas with zero accessories. Let's see who we got next. All right, next up we got the LJN-inspired John Cena figure. As you guys know that have been watching these videos, we did a one-shot video of all these LJNs where we walked through each one. So we won't spend a ton of time on this John Cena. Always felt this John Cena looked a little small. As you guys know, these are smaller than your traditional LJN figures, but this one even seems smaller uh, than those, the other LJN figures. Um... I understand why this was made. You know, they wanted to get guys that didn't have LJN that were kind of more current. Uh, I understood the concept. I just think it didn't work out. 
It was a, a failure. I don't think the love for the LJNs, it was there, but it isn't like today. Uh, and I think Jeremy Padauer even said he, if he had to do it again, he would have probably done it as Hasbro's instead. I think I read a comment once. So there you got the Superstars packaging there. Uh, I just, you know what, you guys know my feelings by now on these. And if you don't, I'll sum it up as uh, I always felt these wasted a spot for another character, another first in the line character, or somebody we could have had. Maybe we could have had a different outfit of somebody, or we could have had, you know, the Dory Funks of the world um, instead. I mean, I felt like it blocked a spot for somebody else that maybe was more deserving in my eyes. Um, now it's just kind of a niche little, what what the heck was that about? So there you go, John Cena on the back. It looks a lot like Lance Storm in that glamour shot, I think. I don't know, you tell me. Um, let's see what it says. John Cena, weight 240 pounds, 6 foot 1, finishing move, the FU and the STFU. Titles, WWE Champion, United States Champion, World Tag Team Champion. And uh, the uh, prototype, he had black wrist tape and his arms were closer together. So that's just a little bit of a note there. Uh, that's interesting. He's got more of a wide stance in this one. But don't think anybody really would care either way. Not a lot of love for these. Even though I am working on a complete loose set, I decided they go with my WCW OSFTM figures. That's my plan with these. But there you have it, the LJN-inspired John Cena. Let's see who we got next. All right, next up was one on paper that I was probably the most excited about uh, to have. Um, it was interesting. You know, you, just like today, you see who's going to be in Jack's Class Superstars 20. You'd see the list. You wouldn't see the prototypes, the pictures. Your mind would just kind of work and say, okay, I wonder what this could be. And one I was so looking forward to was this one, the Ron Simmons figure. Uh, a lot of people know him as Farouk and, and stuff like that and the Nation of Domination and the APA later on. But uh, my first uh, incarnation of Ron Simmons uh, was Doom, of course, his tag team with Butch Reed. I absolutely loved that tag team. That WCW scene of, of tag teams at that time in the early 90s was just phenomenal. I loved Doom. Uh, you know, I didn't know who Butch Reed and Ron Simmons were outside of that. So I remember a lot of people saying, oh, it's the worst kept secret in the world. Well, for little Kyle, I had no idea who those two guys were when they unmasked. Uh, other people did, but... I remember fondly picking up the Galoob Ron Simmons back in the day in his uh, sweatpants and, and Nikes. Uh, you know, he was stuck in that muscle pose. Uh, a terrible figure. That Butch Reed figure was 100% solid. I love that Butch Reed. But the Ron left some to be desired. I remember picking those up specifically at KB as a kid. And I remember Butch Reed being extremely hard to find. Uh, but anyways, that was my first Ron Simmons figure. Um, we had had APA figures and stuff like this, but this is, when I think of Ron Simmons, when I hear the Ron Simmons, I think of him beating Vader for the WCW title back in the day. That's what this figure represents. This is the only representation of that figure we've ever had. I would love to see Mattel uh, take a, sw a swing at this one. Uh, we've had the APA one, we've had the Nation one, but we need an old school Ron Simmons. Uh, WCW champion, NWA champion, or, or WCW champion. Ron Simmons. I would really like to see Mattel uh, try to do that. And I, I think it's possible. And now that I'm thinking about it, they actually did. What am I saying? They did come out with that. I think it was in the Hall of Champions line. You know, I got a lot of figures. You know, I have thousands of figures. And uh, they did. I forgot all about that. It just clicked in my head that, hey, it was a Target exclusive a couple years back. So they did. Mattel gave us what we want. I just uh, didn't think of it. So there you go. A little correction of the mind right then and there. But uh, absolutely love this figure. And this was the only representation of that time frame until that Mattel came out. Uh, and it's a bit of a forgotten. People don't think of this Ron Simmons. When you think Ron Simmons, you think of APA Ron Simmons, I think for the most part. Maybe some people think of Ron Simmons as uh, uh, the Nation of Domination leader. Or maybe some with that crazy helmet with Sonny. Uh, but very few remember this Ron Simmons. And this was a favorite of my childhood Ron Simmons time. So there you go. A very, very solid figure. Let's take a peek here. Got him in the blue white white uh, shoes white wrist tape of course the title belt ron simmons on the side there it is there there it is there obviously this one is not as good as the mattel it's a strong figure but the mattel obviously with the modern day uh, head scan is a little bit better than this one but i do like this figure as i said some great paint decorations got the big rs on the side uh, weight 270 pounds, six foot two. Finishing move: the Dominator. Titles: WCW Champion and World Tag Team Champion. So uh, go back. That's your homework for today. Go back. Watch some early Ron Simmons uh, WCW. Um, watch some uh, Doom matches. Uh, the old school WCW uh, Ron Simmons stuff. But there you have it. Ron Simmons Classic Superstars Series 20. 
And don't ever forget about that Mattel. How dare I? Let's see who we got next. All right, next up in the Class of Superstars lineup, we have another old friend. He's back again. Jack's favorite. As you guys know, the Ruthless Aggression line, they released a million Rey Mysterio figures. And the Class of Superstars line also continued that with some Rey Mysterio. So we had Rey Mysterio in Series 20. The thing I like about this Rey Mysterio figure is he always looks smaller. We had some that looked way too tall, way too big. This one in the package, I think part of the color scheme and part of the figure, he looks small. Like he should. He's a small guy. Uh, so I always like this Rey. There he is right there, looking good. Uh, very cool packaging or figure in there, Ray Mysterio. There he is on the side, and then you got the back, the old glamour shot. Now, Ray does come with his silver chair, and this was the silver chair he would carry around that actually he uh, sat in. You know, a lot of these guys in these Jax figures, they had their chairs with them, and it seems weird that they were just throwing chairs in to throw them in, and as you guys know, over these videos, we found out about a lot of guys having chairs throughout the years. Uh, you know, chairs that meant something to them. There's a big thing about sitting in that locker room. You want comfiness of your own chair, and Ray was no different than the other ones. I believe Ray has came with a few different chair colors, uh, and that goes to the fact is, uh, as Ray, you know, wore thousands of different masks out there, he also changed his chair color. But I'll tell you what, it was the same chair. He would just spray paint it in his garage. That was the only difference. So whenever you see a Ray chair, that symbolizes that same chair he's always had, but like he changes his mask, he changes the color of his uh, chairs. I think that's right. I'm not sure. I might have just made that up right here and now. But somebody can fact check that if they want to. But let's read the back about Ray. 165 pounds, 5 foot 6. Finishing move, the West Coast Pop in the 619. Titles, World Heavyweight Champion, WWE Tag Team Champion, Cruiserweight Champion, WCW Tag Champion, and Royal Rumble winner. So like I said, a very, very solid Ray. I can't remember off the top of my head what outfit this represents. If somebody knows, leave it in the comments. What uh, match or year. I want to say this is WCW Ray, but it could be early WWE. Not totally positive. I don't believe it's ECW, but let me know in the comments which one this is. But there you go. A very solid Ray. Like I said, I like how he looks small in this figure compared to some where he's a lot bigger. So there you go. Ray Mysterio, Classic Superstars Series 20. All right, guys, we've come to the end of Class of Superstars Series 20. Like I said, a smaller set, only seven people in this set, but we're ending with a heavy, heavy hitter. One of the most wanted back in the day. A lot of people were clamoring, we want a Dynamite Kid. Very similar to Mattel today, we want a new Dynamite Kid. Well, we got one with Jax. I believe Jeremy Padauer worked out a deal with uh, Dynamite's family outside of the WWE, which I don't think Mattel is allowed to do that. But uh, that was part of the beauty of the Jax Class Superstars line. They could work deals outside of WWE to get some of these people we really want in the lineup. And if I remember right, I couldn't find it. I couldn't remember what video it was. But going back through my videos, looking at the comments, as I read every single comment uh, and interact as needed, uh, there was a guy in there and he posted. I remember the whole story back in the day too. And that guy posted on the video saying he was the one that got Dynamite Kid in touch uh, with Jeremy at Jax to figure out the whole licensing deal and that. So we owe... That guy, I can't remember your name, but hopefully you're watching this. Leave the story in the comments. I'm sure we'd all love to see those comments and how that all went. But if my memory serves me right back in the day, he helped get them all in touch to make this figure a possibility. As you know, we got a couple more Dynamite kids after this as well. So Dynamite was fairly well represented in the Jax Class Superstars lineup. Uh, nothing from Mattel as of now. Hopefully, you know, we got a British Bulldog uh, David Boy Smith figure coming very soon. Would love to have a matching Dynamite. Uh, Dynamite was so far ahead of his time back then. Uh, I only got to see a little bit of the British Bulldogs as a kid, kind of at the end of their uh, run, but went back through the years, saw the Calgary stuff, some Japan stuff. I've seen a lot of Dynamite. Uh, you know, Chris Benoit was one of my favorite wrestlers ever. He took a lot of his stuff from Dynamite, so I absolutely love Dynamite as well. Must have figure in the line for sure. I actually picked up a loose version of this one fairly recently in the last uh, couple of years. Found it a good deal. Could not pass that up, so... There you have it, Dynamite Kid. Take a look. A little bit of a plain figure. Comes with the tag team title, but a cool figure nonetheless. Looks just like him in the head sculpt. Dynamite Kid on the side. Glamour shot. Of course, the back there. There you go. Let's see what it says about old Dynamite. 228 pounds, 5 foot 8. Finishing move, the diving headbutt. Titles, world tag team champion. So we're ending on a strong note. I think this is probably my second favorite figure in the whole set. Ric Flair in the green robe has got to be my favorite of this one. 
But classic Superstars 20, like I said at the top of the video, uh, kind of the teetering of the, uh, the, the books here on classic Superstars. A smaller set, a lot smaller than the 9, 10, 11, even 12 we've been accustomed to, down to seven figure set. Um, and then the uh, you know the the uh, store shelves were not stocked with these uh, like previous sets as well. So it was kind of getting to the end. You know we had 28 lineups or 28 single carded sets here. This is way down at the end of the line. This is uh, almost last year. Let's see what year this was actually. This is 2008. So we all know Jax lost the license in 2010. So uh, this is very end of the road, starting the end of the road. Um, and it, get, it gets a little worse. We get some uh, head scratchers uh, as we go up to 28, and especially that Series 28 is a very difficult set. That's going to be a that's going to be an off the rails review. I can tell you that right now. And then we'll get to the best of Class of Superstars lineup, and that'll be off the rails as well. So we got a lot more uh, to go. We got about 10 more single carded videos of the traditional release. Then we're going to jump into the deluxes and a lot of different stuff. We'll put up a poll when it gets closer to see what you guys want to do next, but. There you have it, Classic Superstars Series 20. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to leave your comment. What's your favorite of this lineup? What's your least favorite? Do you have these? Did you pick them up? Did you not even know these existed? You guys tell me in the comments. And uh, I'm Kyle, and I'll see you guys all real soon. And don't forget to subscribe as well. There you go. See you later.